Happy 2022, everyone. And Richard, it is great to see you. How are you? It, it is great. Uh, it is great to be seen. I wish we were live, but we'll, you know, soon. We'll, Fingers we'll crossed. Plan B. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking we should start with a lightning round just to get you, just to get to know you a little bit better. So I'm going to kick it right off. So hometown. Altoona, Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. uh, most overused word. Um, one that I cannot use uh, on brand innovators. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I like your honesty. Um, uh, currently reading. <laughs> Uh, I, I am a, uh, I, I'm a self-aware nerd, uh, and, um, based on uh, my son and I going and enjoying the Spider-Man movie, we are now going back and reading old Spider-Man comics. Love. That is awesome. Um, currently watching. Uh, like everybody, I'm watching way, way too much, uh, streaming TV right now. Thank you, uh, to the last couple of years. Um, so actually of that, I would say the absolute best television I've seen has been Ted Lasso. Oh my God, love Ted Lasso. That is, I'm with you on that. I, th I think that's amazing. And we are on Brand Innovators. So favorite brand outside of T. Rowe Price? Outside of T. Rowe Price. Uh, again, coming back to that nerd comment, I'm going to go with Disney. Uh, Ooh, okay. I think their, um, their dedication to storytelling is something I think we all we all can learn from. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree with you more. So, you know, Richard, you have a really interesting background and you can certainly give us a very unique perspective with the different places you've worked throughout your career to date. Could you give us a little bit more um, of, tell us a bit more about your journey, where you've been, where you've worked previously prior to coming to T. Rowe Price? Sure, sure. I, um, yeah, I've, I've had kind of uh, many phases of, of the career, right? Uh, so I started out in ad agencies. I, I came up as a copywriter and then became a creative director and a, you know, agency exec. Um, and then I jumped uh, to the client side. And my first job that I jumped into actually was uh, with the Orioles. So I was a uh, director of, of branding and marketing for the Orioles for 10 seasons. Uh, which was an incredible experience, a lifelong baseball player, coach, fan. So that was incredible. Um, and then along the way, I also started to teach at some universities. So I taught at Towson University here in Baltimore, uh, and then also ended up teaching at my alma mater at Penn State uh, for a few years. Uh, went into the media world for a little while and, and was a director of brand strategy for AccuWeather. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've landed back in Baltimore at, at T. Rowe Bryce. I love it. That's fantastic. I think, you know, um, especially from our conversations as well, sports marketing has certainly had, and even proving from your background today, um, a huge influence in terms of the way that you think. And I think I'd love to kind of go delve into a little bit more about, you know, with sports marketing, their consumers are their fans. So, you know, there's a lot we can take out from there. So could you talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Yeah. I, and, and I think fan, fan is the word, right? It's, it's, you don't deal with customers, you deal with fans. And I, yeah. and I think that that entire experience really taught me about how, you know, you are that when you think about your favorite sports teams, right? So, so anybody the, the, in the attendance listening, right? You tend to use pronouns like we, you know, we, we play this weekend, we made the playoffs, we beat such and such, right? It's a sense of ownership that, um, you know, is, is very different, right? A consumer package good, uh, you know, the, any company that you deal with, any brand that you love, uh, you know, the height of your interaction with them is going to be purchasing a product, right? You, you may, you know, whatever, you, you may buy some ancillary other kind of thing in, in a sports world you'll tattoo logos on your body. You'll name children after uh, elements of the team. You'll, you'll plan vacations. You'll decorate your home. You'll, I mean, it, it's, it's such a heightened level of loyalty that I think, you know, what that has done for me post the sports world has, has really, you know, made me really focus on what can I do to make you a fan of, uh, like make, make this, make this a, a conversation that you feel so proud of that you want to go tell everybody about you you want to, to be the the evangelist i you don't i don't i don't need to go tell the story you're going to go tell the story for me 
Yeah, no, I couldn't agree with you more. I, th I think what's really interesting as well is that, you know, again, it's that emotional connection that you create with that brand. But, you know, on our uh, prep call, we were discussing a lot about sort of relevancy and that human connection. Now, obviously, within financial services and financial services marketing, it is very different to sort of like a CPG where, you know, if you're walking into a store, you don't necessarily from an investment and wealth perspective you know it's a different type of audience that you're trying to connect with so how do you feel about how do you work to create more of that humanistic kind of approach and conversation versus you know from obviously from a cpg which is slightly different how, how do you create that connection with the audiences i actually it's, it, again you just you just said a word that is so key to it and that is conversation it, yeah. it's it's thinking about thinking about the marketing, the branding, the communication, whatever you're doing right there, and, and mm -hmm. really truly making it feel like a conversation, something that yeah. is a give and take, something that is relevant. It's not transactional. It's not, um, you know, we're trying to sell you something. We're trying to convince you of something. We, so, you know, what can we do to feel like we have earned a conversation that the other side wants yeah. to engage in and, and wants to be a part of? I think that's, that that's the sort of key thing there. And, 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 you know, I think we are fortunate. I think all anyone in the financial space, I think you, you know, we're fortunate in that we do have a very human connection with our audiences and that we're helping them, right? Your, your financial confidence and your, your financial stability in your life will dictate so many other emotional aspects of your life, right? So we do have a very uh, a logical, relevant spot to, to be able to earn that conversation. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, can you give us an example of a new technology that you see as having brought very positive change uh, in terms of a financial brand's ability to engage and connect with consumer groups? Um, I, you know, not not necessarily a new technology, but I, but I just I think how you know how how the the mobile world has now become you know it, it's it's so normal now, right? Like I I was a uh, um, I, I remember talking to someone a couple of days ago about some website work and, and remembering how, you know, it used to be that you would design a website thinking about the desktop experience and then mobile was this sort of side dish. And, mm -hmm. you know, now when you're designing that user experience, it's so much more mobile. And then, oh yeah, by the way, this is how it works on desktop, right? Yep. So I think even with that, you know, just us as humans, us as consumers, we are now so much more in control mm -hmm. of how we engage with brands. So yeah. for a brand to keep that front of mind, I think is is so paramount right now to just really, you know, truly think about that, that it, it's, it's not a conversation driven by us, it's a conversation driven by them. Yeah, no, absolutely. And when you just think about, again, sort of the disruption of everybody's life over the last sort of two years, you know, it's how, like, I'm working from home, obviously, I go into the office occasionally now, but it's a complete transformation from commuting into the city every day. So, you know, for me personally, I find I have more time as well to think about me and what I'm doing with my life versus, you know, when you are in a work environment, it's in the office, it's just a different way of thinking and perspective every day. So, you know, I think, how are you connecting uh, with your audience now with this different mindset and this sort of new world? Because obviously I would imagine that it shifted quite substantially from where you were or where the company was two years ago to where you are now. How, how do you go about that? Like, what, how have you kind of shifted and what's changed in that time, do you think? I think that, you know, again, with that idea of the, you know, the mobile world, the digital age, people being in control of stuff, I think, you know, all of us again, too, you know, you put your actual, you know, human hat on, not the marketer yep. hat on, right? Yep. And, and, you know, think about all of the things that you were not able to do instantaneously mm -hmm. and then how you had to adapt, right? Yeah. Certain elements of that, adaptation are things that you actually have grown accustomed to and enjoyed and want to continue into the future yeah. uh, sort of sense there. So I think that, you know, for us, again, you know, we are, we're not a consumer package good. You can't, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, you're not going to make an impulse buy, walk down the aisle, see a bottle of tea row and, and grab it. Right. I mean, you know, we are something that, you know, I, I think it, it, it's forced us, I think, you know, to, to really truly think about the fact that our, our intellectual insights 
are yeah. the, the, the thing that we can offer and the thing that we can provide. So how do we deliver that? How do we make that feel natural and relevant? And, and again, for anyone in the financial space, we have that opportunity to really truly help. Yeah, I think that's the that heightened humanity through all of this is that we have a capability to have a really relevant, genuine, authentic conversation with you about helping you. And yeah. I think that, that's that's an awesome place to be. And how do you think it's kind of shifted as well in terms of, again, sort of thinking not what, about sort of the platforms that you're communicating on? Obviously, you said mobile is probably a little bit more at the forefront versus where you used to just design everything for desktop. But I mean, in terms of maybe looking at, you know, um, addressable, uh, um, and is there anything else that you're delving into slightly different to where you were prior or where you are now? Or is it more the not so much the platform and the technology, but the messaging? Um, I, I think it actually honestly is both, truthfully. Okay. I think, um, you know, we've even, you know, we've, we've launched a podcast series uh, recently where we've you know, having it, you know, feel like it's just a natural conversation. It's not textbook. It's not, we're not trying to, you know, go so, you know, inside finance that you have to feel like you have a, you know, an MBA to be able to listen to it. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, we're speaking in a more human voice. Um, but I think again, all of this, you know, brands in, in totality. I mean, I think that, you know, it's this last couple of years, right. Where all of a sudden, you know, everything had to come to you. You couldn't yeah. physically go, to do, you know, whatever and, and, and transact, right? I think there was there was a little a literal phase of that, but I think there's also the sort of figurative phase of that of we all have to go out to our consumers. We all have to engage in a much different way and, and you know, not do it in a sales, uh, again, sort of a transactional way, do it in a, in a much more human uh, approachable way. Yeah, and just something else that I was thinking of then as well, and again with financial services and, and just listening to some of the prior sessions, you know, there's this new world of like NFTs and crypto and the world is significantly changing in terms of cultural habits and you know 15 year olds now are like all over wanting to create these NFTs so you know from the way that again the audience that you're speaking to now how is that and how are you thinking about the future consumer and how, is there sort of a roadmap how to get there or, or what's your thinking behind that to make sure that you are hitting these younger consumers and you're going to be getting and reaching and then you're going to be the forefront of their mind when they do get to that audience that you want to reach sure sure i um I, you know i I think when you when you look at all that, if you if you kind of step back and, and maybe don't look at it as just the things that have happened in the last couple of years, but try to look at like what's the trend, right? Yep. The trend going out, the trend long term is absolutely in this idea of the audience being in control of the experience, right? Yep. Any anything that comes along, any any technology that comes along is allowing me to be the author of what I am going to interact with and what I'm going to experience, right? So I think it's more the it's the idea it's the recognition of that it's and and also too I think being you know being much more honest about the reality of what people are you know for us people are investing but if you're investing for the long term so you know even with you know uh, volatility of of the the pandemic or, or you know whatever sort of phase right um, if you're investing for a retirement, say in 20 years, you don't want to make a short term decision, a knee jerk reaction that will actually have a very negative impact on the, this build, you know, this built of, of, of wealth or, or, you know, finances through time. So I think for us, we, you know, always trying to keep that long term sort of view. Um, and, and again, really, truly, I think just any technology, right? I mean, you know, the car made it easier to get to point A to point B than a horse. So, yeah it took off, it worked, right? I mean, it's any, any technology that comes along makes it easier for someone to get more things done. Yep. So how do, we, how do we respect that when we go out and, and interact with folks? Yeah, and again, I think going back to that relevancy and, you know, I think we've mentioned on our call, on our prep call that, you know, at the beginning, again, not to talk about sort of the past too much, but, you know, the messaging when the pandemic first hit, it was quite fluffy in terms of, 
we're here for you and but you know how much obviously the messaging now is like after a while you kind of got bored of that you know it's like let's move on and what is it you can help me with but yet talking again within that sort of from a creative perspective what is the messaging that you put forward and I just think that that is is really interesting but you know again sort of thinking about the changes and the accelerated disruption and and how we're looking forward what are the lasting benefits that you see and what are you like keen to pursue what what are you thinking for for 2022 uh, I, well, I, I definitely think that the lasting benefit is, again, that idea of, you know, we had as, as, as a society, right, we had to pivot and figure out way, new ways to do something, right? There are so many aspects of things that we've done that we had to change differently that I think a lot of folks don't want to go away, right? I mean, they, they want that flexibility. They want the, the, the ability to have things come to them, right? So, from a brand standpoint, I think you look at that, you embrace that, and you understand again, how can I make this feel like a, a content that you're engaging with rather than an ad, right? It's, it's not necessarily, um, it's, it's not necessarily so much trying to think about what are the, the ways that I can convince you to do something. It's more mm -hmm. the matter of how can I earn a seat at a table in a conversation learn and learn and listen in that conversation to then be able to say, here's how I can weave a product into that conversation. Here's how I can, here's how I can benefit you rather yep. than how you will benefit by dealing with me. Yep. No, a hundred percent. Um, so kind of going back to the sports analogy here, because I just love your backdrop. Um, if T Row Price was a sports team and the brands were your players, uh, what do you need from the owners and partners to make 2022 a winning year? Uh, oh boy. Um, I, you know, I, I'll answer a sports question with a sports metaphor. I think <laughs> um, all of us need to keep our eye on the ball, right? I think we all need to, again, really understand where people are after having gone through this, this sort of phase and, and, you know, I, th I think even too, you think about the last couple of years, right? At the, at, at the beginning of it, we felt like we were going to go into something weird and then come out of it and go back to normal. Yep. And that as the window grew and as the time has grown and as so much has gone on right now, we're in the new normal. Okay. It's not, you know, there, there's not a, a this chapter is not going to close and we're going to go back to 2019, right? We're in a new normal. And I think you know, keep focused on that. Keep focused on that we need to be genuine. We need to be real. Um, you know, we all want to own some sort of headspace um, in, you know, whatever demographic that we're, we're trying to speak to. But I think we all have to really truly understand what is the, what's the headspace that we really actually genuinely can own. Not yeah. all brands can be all things to all people. So mm -hmm. what is the space that we really truly feel like we can go for and then just make sure that we are laser focused on getting there? Yeah. Can I ask then, putting you on the spot again, um, you know, where, what sort of, who do you think has been doing that really well? Is there any sort of campaign or anything that outside of Disney and T. Rowe Price <laughs> that you feel that has done a really good job of that authenticity, that kind of bringing everything to life at the forefront and is doing it well? Um, yeah, you know, yeah, there, there's, uh, I think there's a lot of brands that, that, didn't fall into that trap that you had mentioned before of like, you know, everyone started saying like, Hey, we love you. We're all in this together. Let's all hug. Um, there were brands I think that, that stood out from that and, and, and um, got more genuine. I think, even to, there, you know, there's, um, there's one brand that actually it's a, it's a bizarre example maybe, but um, uh, there's a, a weight loss app that I've been uh, seeing a lot. Obviously it's January and everyone's got resolutions and all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, the brand Noom, I think has, is, is really impressive in that it's, you know, it's, it's, it, it knows it has something to benefit. Obviously everyone wants to be healthier and everyone wants to, you know, lose weight and be more active and, and all that sort of stuff, right? But they, I think, looked at the entire conversation that everyone was having there and, and focused on the fact that no one really had been talking about the psychology yeah. of weight loss. And, and so they, I think they identified, wait a minute, there, you know, this is a conversation that a lot of people are talking about, but no one's talking about this. Mm -hmm. That's a space we can go into. That's a space we can own. 
Um, and I think, you know, beyond that too, you see other things like, you know, uh, you know, meditation apps, calm, like mm -hmm. things like that, where it's, it's, there were, there were always topics, but I don't think people ever really truly thought about them enough. And, and I think these brands have figured out a way to get that conversation a little more front and center and make it feel more relevant to people that maybe otherwise didn't really pay attention to it. Yeah. And do you remember where you saw where you were exposed to the, that messaging on what platform by any uh, oh, social media, definitely. That's, yeah, um, yeah that's, I, I sadly am, am I, I am an addict. Of, Where's uh, your go-to? What's uh, your go-to? Your... Find out what's going on in the world. I <laughs> and what social media platforms do you lean into? Uh, Instagram, um, probably first. Um, LinkedIn, definitely want to definitely pay attention to that. And uh, I, I, I still go to old school Facebook. Love. Well done. Excellent. And I think what you were saying there, though, there are a few things that just come out at me here, like the psychology. I totally agree with you. And I think especially within financial marketing as well, being able to, you know, that connection, that fan base, but yet that conversation, you know, how have or can you kind of lean into the types of topics that you're addressing that you feel that consumers are interested in? Are there anything sort of areas that you think are sort of coming to the surface right now in financial marketing that we, you want to like talk about or no absolutely I, I i think that it's really interesting you know we've got um we we are we're very very blessed in that we've got a lot of of just amazing subject matter experts mm -hmm. um and one of the things that's really really impacted me personally and, and thinking about is is the shifting dynamic of when people think about retirement what what truly is that? And, you know, I think that very stereotypically, you know, you've seen the, you know, permanent vacation kind of model The I will, I'll live on a beach the rest of my life. And, and, you know, when you think about, you know, old school uh, financial service advertising, it's, it's, you know, buying the yacht and, and, you know, living this unattainable sort of lifestyle. And, and, you know, the reality now is that retirement isn't necessarily an end. Retirement is a is a career pivot, right? You you probably will go from working for someone else to potentially working for yourself, starting a business, doing something on your terms, or, or you know living life on your terms. And I think so. It what what that does for me, I think, is that it, it shows us a way that like you've always typically heard this. Let me show you what actually might be much more realistic and and. Uh, something that actually is a pleasant surprise and, and have that conversation in a little bit different ways, right? So we want to, you know, obviously everyone in the financial space, to your price included, we, you know, we want to prepare you for tomorrow. But even if you think you are preparing for tomorrow, you may be preparing for a tomorrow that's not really realistic. This, this is the realistic tomorrow. So let's prepare for the right thing. Yeah. Um, and again, it just, it gets back, it's genuine. It's, it's, it's you know, it's the relevancy. It's, it's all that stuff, really making it feel real. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think also just from, you know, now about sort of just thinking about impact investing and, you know, where people now want to put their money into places what they where they believe. So, you know, from sustainability, you know, that there's a lot of topics of conversation for especially brands like T. Rowe Price to really kind of think about and be the expert matters to help elevate these conversations to higher levels that can, again, from a state sustainability standpoint, really kind of help the, the environment as well, which I think is really interesting. Thing. Yeah, no, um, I, I, you know, honestly, too, I, to that point, though, again, like, you know, ESG is, is obviously it's huge, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's such a, a, a dominant thing. But again, if you think about the psychology behind it, it is I'm doing something and I feel good because I'm, I'm investing my money in something that has an impact. And I, I so again, it, it's that it's a it's that notion of who who owns this whole thing, right? It's not it's yeah. not us. It's them. Yeah. It's the, the audience owns it. Yep, no, absolutely. So going back to your classroom, obviously we have a lot of keen students out there. Um, what would be the one or two key takeaways that you would like to give today's class for where we need to rethink our focus for 2022? Um, you know, it, it's the whole thing, everything that we're doing, it's a conversation. It, it's it's a conversation, right? And And I think that when marketers, when we get it wrong, you probably can again put you know put your psychology hat on and and understand that 
we've done something in that conversation that we would never do in an actual human conversation, mm-hmm. right? So why would we do it here? And, and, and so I think just get back to that idea of if I'm having a one-on-one conversation with someone, how do I act? How do I speak? What am I putting forth important? What, you know, what, how am I treating that relationship that I'm trying to build? And where can I like take those lessons and apply them to what we're doing at a, at a larger scale? Absolutely. So do you think sort of, again, there's a lot of sort of conversation, is social media kind of a big component of where you're thinking things are going to be shifting to in in 2022? Is that kind of the... Yeah, I I definitely. And again, I think it's anywhere that, anywhere where the audience feels like they've got a little bit more of of control over the situation is going to be something that that grows. Social media, without a doubt, right? I mean, I can... I follow who I want to follow. I interact with who I want to interact with. If a brand does something and it impresses me, I share it. I put it out there and it becomes now something that I attribute my name to. So, um, you know, that's that's the place where the conversations are happening. And I think that's the place where the whole notion of relevancy and genuine and, and authentic and that sort of stuff, that's, that's the proving ground for it right there. No, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, so I know we're coming up towards the end of our time here right now, but I think, you know, in terms of um, T. Rowe Price and in terms of this, obviously, I know I've given the sports analogy of there's a lot of people probably on this call who definitely want to help and partner with T. Rowe Price. I mean, how um, how do people, should they think about going ahead and, and, and reaching out or like, what is it that they can bring to the table that's slightly unique or where do you think that they could help you moving forward in 2022? Um, I, you know, I, honestly, I, I always challenge anybody to, uh, I, and, and with T-Row, with, with AccuWeather, with the Orioles, with anybody, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan ever of something that is just a generic partnership where insert sponsor logo here. Yeah. It kind of, you know, whatever. It has to feel natural. It has to feel like it's it's a it, you know it's, we're part of the conversation. We should be part of the conversation. It's a you know it, even if anything too, it's a pleasant surprise that that the brand is there um, because it's relevant in a way that maybe the audience isn't thinking about, but they can now start to think about. Um, I, I think again, it it just it has to be natural. It has to be an authentic extension of our story, yeah. um, and it has to weave together. Again, it's it's not the insert generic sponsor, you know, brought to you by, boom, yeah. you know, it's, it's yeah. got to be organic. Yep. No, absolutely. And unique, something a little bit different sets itself aside and you can have the conversation and it's meaningful in, in a way that's going to be relevant to the audience. So couldn't agree with you more. So I think, um, let me just double check. I just make sure there isn't, um, I think we might be out of time here, actually. I think the questions can't see any other questions coming in. Is there any other lasting thoughts that you would like to to leave us with from our classroom of uh, Uh, classroom? Well, uh, you know, uh, Brand Innovators University, thank you very much for having me. That's that's a huge thing right there. Um, No, I think again, it's just that, you know, let's, you know, we're, everyone's, everyone's dealing with the same challenges. Yep. Let's just make, remind everybody that we're all human and, and, Think, think like a human first and a marketer second. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I'm super excited about what 2022 is going to bring. I just think that opportunity, how technology has evolved, I think the shifted mindset, and again, coming back to just being human is, is such a key takeaway. And I think that I'm excited to see what the next 12 months brings, especially for, for marketing brands. But it's been such a pleasure talking to you, Richard. Oh, thank you, Rachel. It has well, been, been fun. I, I hate to interrupt, but I hope that you'll keep talking. You have a few <laughs> more minutes. And, you know, inquiring oh, cool. minds want to know. Sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You, you know, this has been uh, really terrific because one of the things that resonated with me most is that you have to create messaging that resonates. So, Richard, you teed this off with talking about the fact that uh, you have to use the word fans, not customers in thinking about that. And my second favorite concept is I come from the world of podcasting also. So yay, mad love about that. Um, So I'd love to know between Rachel and Richard, um, what some of the 
interesting ad approaches have been? You know, are you also into um, short form advertising? Um, how are we moving interactivity forward a little bit more? Um, and any other thoughts about your personal preferences with that? I think, you know, for, for me, it's, again, I think you have to adapt depending on the platform. So, you know, I come from a publishing world where, you know, if, if you're reading on your mobile, the experience is shorter versus if you're reading it in print, for example. So I think the adaptability of platform and making sure that you're writing for that device is super important. And I'm just thinking about my own consumer habits versus anything else. Going back to the psychology, Richard, that you're, you're teaching about, but um, but no, I just think it's it's really exciting the the way, especially with addressable TV, and there's a lot of different ways in which now to connect with audiences and that personalization. I just think it's really exciting times to to come. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think it it you know all of that all that stuff too. And you know, you talked about the addressable. I mean, I think it, it's you know we as marketers now you know we do have so much more power to reach out to someone in their life, even though you think about, you know, the, the sort of the, you know, the, the surface level commentary is like, oh, well, I can ignore advertising and I can fast forward past this and skip this and this kind of stuff. Well, we have way more sneaky ways of getting to you now. So, <laughs> but the problem, the, the, the challenge that comes with that though, is that they're all based on this idea of relevancy. So if you come at someone in a more relevant platform, but you come at them with a not relevant story, it's it, you're done, you're out. And, 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 you know, I think even the, the days that I spent in digital media, the idea of, you know, the, the second you, da you delete an app, you will never get back again. You're never coming back to that table, right? No one, no one downloads an app, deletes it, and then goes back and gets it again. Like, no, you're done. So um, really just respect to the idea of if, if I'm coming to you in a more relevant media, I need to come at you with a heightened sense of relevancy in my message as well. Yes. Uh, we did have a couple of questions that I think uh, were not completely touched on and we can continue to vamp on those. Um, I will say that I had an interesting interview not too long ago with Mark Kidd, who's the head of um, an out of home product, but his dad was a hall of fame coach, uh, Roy Kidd. And he, Mark has applied a lot of his lessons from watching his dad coach um, college football so one of the questions is, Richard, you spent nine years with the Baltimore Orioles. Did you take away any lessons from working with MLB and applying them in your current job with T. Rowe Price? I love this question. Every, every day. Absolutely every day. Um, I, you know, the, the, the easiest one to, to say is, is the idea of a team. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I think that, you know, everyone um, and even in baseball, right? I mean, you know, you've baseball is a sport where people have very defined positions. So, you know, uh, you know, uh, aside from, uh, you know, Otani for, uh, with, with the angels that, that pitches and hits and, and does everything else, but like, you know, you've got a specialization, right. But you need all of those pieces together. You can't, you know, the second baseman can't try to be the catcher. The, the left fielder can't try to be the pitcher, right. You have to specialize in what you do and you add all those pieces together and you get an amazing team. Everyone. Rachel, if you were um, playing baseball, what do you think you would play? What position? Oh my God. Well, first of all, I come from London. So I have no <laughs> okay, idea. Cricket. I'm cricket. sorry, everyone. Cricket. I always get a bit nervous with the sports analogy part because I have to relate to something UK related. <laughs> uh, that's funny. So um, um, I don't know, the runner. <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll give you a mulligan, as we say here in golf, uh -huh. and uh, we'll talk about, thank you for that, uh, and let's talk about what makes a really successful sponsorship. Someone asked, what's the most successful one you've done? What are the ingredients and in any case study um, comments on that? Um, I, you know, honestly, it's, again, it's, it's, it's that it's it's a natural extension of the brand. It's not a cookie cutter, you know, any insert anybody in there, right? Insert any sort of thing in there. Um, it's it has to feel that it's valuable. And and I think too that, you know, consumers are smart, right? They know, you know, we, we you know, we 
I, I've been talking a lot about trying to not make it feel transactional and not making it feel like an ad, but we're all smart. We understand that the second you see a company's logo somewhere, okay, it's an ad, right? There's a thing there, but it has to feel natural. It has to feel organic. And I think that, um, you know, I, I've been, I've been very lucky to have been on, you know, within baseball with a lot, obviously there's a lot of partnerships and sponsorships in that regard, but um, even in, in life past that, I think um, actually there, there's a, uh, one thing we did with with AccuWeather, um, we partnered with uh, athletics. We partnered with um, Penn State um, football. Foot, uh, they have an event at Penn State football called a whiteout, where everybody in the crowd wears white. So it's this the the physical experience of it is is interesting. The stadium looks beautiful, but we were a weather company, so we came in and we helped sponsor a whiteout. Like it 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 was natural. There was a weather term there. It made sense. It wasn't like you know, it was brought to you by AccuWeather and we told a story. It, that, that story couldn't have been told by Pepsi or, or AT&T or something. Like it, it made more sense for us, right? So it was a much more natural, organic experience that I think elevates both sides of the partnership. Absolutely. Actually, I think there's one last, I don't know if we can ask one last question here, but just came up um, from the audience. Um, Richard, what's your uh, favorite accomplishment in the past year? favorite accomplishment in the last year um, brand I, innovators you know I, I honestly it's keeping my kids sane through a pandemic that that has been without a doubt right I mean uh, they've gone from virtual school to regular school to virtual school to regular school uh, that that definitely would be it um, uh, professionally though I think honestly I think launching our podcast series um, it's it's been great it's been such a fun uh, experience to work on. I think the conversations that we have in our podcast series are just natural. It's warm. It's, it's, I think to me, it, it's kind of, it brings to life that idea of that conversation with our, with our audience. It, it's, it's a legitimate manifestation of that. Fantastic. There were, um, you know, one of our, our next um, conversations will be coming up with um, esports and things like that. So um, last question, a couple of curious minds about some of the more um, forward thinking interactive messaging platforms. Someone asked about Twitch and someone asked about Discord. Um, any favorites, any thoughts on um, those types of platforms? Uh, well, you know, I, I, uh, Twitch is a great example. I think some of the sports leagues and, and you know, esports. I think it, it's it's something that um, esports is one of those weird topics. I feel like there's like a generational gap of like, you know, you hit a certain age and people look at it like, what the heck is this? And and a sort of a, a below age are like, oh my god, this is incredible. It's it's interesting though. I think esports and and I know um, too earlier in life I did some with with uh, I did some work with video games and. It's interesting. I think marketers, I don't think we look at that the way that we ought to be looking at that. It's, it's in a weird way, the esports world, when you put an ad in an esports environment, it actually heightens the realism of it. And it's something where I feel like, you, you know, if you do it in the traditional world, people scoff at it of like, oh, it's an ad. I don't want to see that there. You see right. it in the esports world and all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's really cool. An actual brand, a, a, a real ad. It, it makes everything feel real, right? So as a marketer, it's all of a sudden, wait a minute, I can get people excited to see my logo. I can get people excited to see my brand. You're introducing a new different kind of conversation there. Um, Great point. And it's, um, the, the stuff like that, I, I'm, I'm very excited to see the, the next level of. I think it's, it's, it's yeah. incredible. It's incredible. And I think Rachel would appreciate that kind of um, positioning because it feels native 